love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Welcome to Framework Fortune. I'm your host, Ben, and we've got special guest, developer of Packet Crypt, CJDNS, Caleb. How are you doing today? You've got a whole lot more acolytes. Once you give everybody a quick overview of who you are and what you are doing. Thanks. I'm doing great. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, brief little overview of what I'm doing with PKT. Well, I mean, the point here is to decentralize the internet and make it self-sovereign. So what does self-sovereignty mean? It means that we shouldn't have to get, so you think about like the crypto ecosystem, you know, we're still having to rely on the legacy ecosystem to get our internet access in order to be able to run that crypto ecosystem. And, you know, they could just turn us off at any moment if they wanted to. And, you know, if we're tickling the bear with regard to the legacy system, we'd better have our own communication infrastructure. I mean, really, we need everything, but communication is key. It's critical. So Absolutely. that's what I'm really focused on with Packet is to make the Internet self-sovereign, decentralized so that you have just regular individuals owning and operating their own pieces of Internet infrastructure. And then you have like little tech companies spread around the world who can buy bandwidth leases on that infrastructure and then use that to knit together virtual networks. Yeah, and the more, like you said, tickling the bear, there's going to be pushback from those legacy companies on this. You know, we're already seeing pushback from governments on crypto adoption and uh, this type of industry disrupting is not going to be met with uh, very nicety easy going big corporate people in the isp provider <laughs> atmosphere you know so I, I think we've got a, a fight ahead of us but as i put out the video my intro to pkt i pretty much said the same thing you said the biggest problem with cryptos right now is they can the whole internet can be shut off because a few giants own the servers like amazon and google they own quite a bit of the servers if they want to turn it off they can turn it off and that would be the end of crypto for you know until the internet comes back on so you're really the only project that i know of that is trying to tackle that issue and you've got some competition but i don't think they're really that much competition i ain't even going to mention them uh they're not mining hard bandwidth actually i have a, a friend who's a miner he's off all his mining's off right now, his hard his hard physical miners, his mining rigs, because those internet bandwidth ones are not worth it right now to mine. Whereas PKT, it actually doesn't really cost you much to mine it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of these other projects, they're, they're just kind of issuing a token, which... I mean, great. You know, if, if that's what you want to do, I don't want to. I don't want to shit on the token ecosystem, but you have to just realize that a token's only as good as its issuer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to live in the in the in the, the walled kingdom of the token and the issuer, of the token, the CEO, and the investors, like, fine. But you just have to understand that for something at the scale of the internet, it's never going to really work. You know, the mm -hmm. only thing it can work is a protocol that doesn't have any any owner. It's just open source code and, you know, a, a real proof of work algorithm. You are very big on the proof of work coins, not so much on proof of stake. And we may later on probably have a little debate about that as I do like proof of stake, a lot of projects that are there. Uh, but you're more into the Bitcoin maximalist type of ideology, correct? Where Yeah. Yeah, where, where humans basically, well, why don't you explain that just a little bit, the Bitcoin yeah. maximalists. What, what is your views? Right. So, um, I mean, the thing about the proof of work, proof of stake is that proof of stake, I mean, it doesn't work. It's It looks like it works, but nobody's really, really squared the circle to make that work in a secure way. And the, the, the ways that it breaks down are uh, basically you end up with a bunch of central authority a central authority or you can you're susceptible to being hacked but even that aside you know there are really wonderful proof of work coins that are fully decentralized i mean big fan uh zcash monero uh these kind of like real community projects um the thing about it is 
even when you have, uh, you know, when when the tech is is all there, uh, what I really appreciate about Bitcoin, about the Bitcoin community, is that they they are pretty extremist about the idea that money should be free, as in freedom. You know, mm-hmm. the, 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 I, pu- I put this on Twitter the other day. There's two kinds of people in crypto. There's the ones who get into it for free money. And then there's the ones who get into it for free money. And you <laughs> understand what free money means. Yeah. You know, that's what, what the, we're really in it to build is a, a free form of money. And what I really appreciate about the Bitcoin people is that they 100% fully understand that. Over in the smart contract space, there's a lot of, you know, Ethereum, yeah. these types of projects. There's a lot of, I would say, kind of exuberance with the idea of being able to do contracts and tokens and a lot of stuff that it works until it kind of doesn't. And that's where all the rug pulls happen. Uh, That's where, you know, it's, it's just it's a little bit more risky, whereas the Bitcoin ecosystem being so conservative just creates this foundation. It's it's kind of like the, the the digital form of gold. And I really think that that's important. And so, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Bitcoin project, the Bitcoin developers, and some of them I know. Um, they're 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 just some of the greatest people. Yeah, there's a lot of great people in the the Bitcoin community. But I agree too. Even though I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, they're needing to be non controlled money. Right. That's the biggest thing. Like all of these fiat currencies we have across all these different countries right now, we're seeing recessions, we're seeing uh, mass inflation. That's what happens when you have a currency that is backed by nothing. It's not money. There's a difference between yeah. currency and money, which people, I, I think most of the population gets that kind of confused and puts it in a gray area. But there is a specific distinction. And you got to yeah. realize that if you're in well, the markets or whatever. It was like, I think today I read that uh, Walt Disney made a statement, you know, about the, they made this new movie. It, it's got a bunch of kind of leftist um, a political theme to it, you know, socially left political theme. Mm-hmm. And it flopped. And they made a statement, which was that they don't care that it flopped because they consider it an investment in ESG or something like that. And you know, that, that really, that statement really stuck with me because whether you agree with their politics or not, or agree with what that movie was putting out or not, that doesn't matter. The point is that this company is not chasing after the, the superior value. They're not trying to compete in an open marketplace anymore what they're they're doing something different and there's only one of two explanations that i can come up with for this either their ceo's just gone crazy and doesn't care about making money anymore he just wants to promote his his personal world views through the company which i mean the investors are going to are, are going to uh rebel against that yeah. or or they have another stream of revenue that they're not telling you about right. which they're able to get as long as they tow the party line and they they are towing the line of the 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 party that is largely in power in the united states and so i think there is a fairly good chance that some of this quantitative easing money is getting eased into these companies who are towing the party line for the ruling party oh, of the united oh, states you're not you're definitely right about that there's no doubt about that uh, but Disney's a very interesting example. I don't know how much you you know about the inner workings of Disney, but at both Disney World, at least the one in Orlando, Florida, has a whole underground city under it. They actually have the ability to um, create their own nuclear weapons. Somehow that law, yeah, it's crazy. That um, DeSantis, the Florida governor, was trying to take that power away from them, but they've had it for like 20 years. So Disney, so I guarantee there is tons of income revenue streams that Disney makes that nobody knows about. You know, they're a pretty big powerhouse at this point. I mean, I I don't pay attention a lot to the to the details because, you know, Mm. getting the details, you can't necessarily know. But if I see something so simple as, well, we don't care if we lose money on a movie (laughs) and I don't need to know a lot in order to know exactly. you're not working for your company to make money or B, you're making money in a way that I don't know about it. 
You know, it's it's that simple. It does, there can't be anything else to it. And when you see all this quantitative easing money printer money coming out the door, going somewhere, and mm -hmm. you know, they're telling us it's treasury bonds, they're telling us whatever, but we don't know that. You know, the Fed's no. never really been audited. And then, no. well, how do we know that they're not just get printing money and giving it to their friends? And you know, you look in history, and pretty much every time they debase the currency, mm -hmm. you know. The, the the let's say the incentive to get control of the government and then print money and give it to your friends is really significant like we we should be asking the federal reserve to prove that they're not printing money and giving it to their friends yeah well <laughs> maybe uh maybe it take quite a bit of a lawsuit but i think in america that's a losing battle at this point to try to get anything from the feds. I mean, they're not, they've not even been telling us the truth about what's happening with the economy. You know, they, they, they said inflation wasn't going to get that bad. There was a decent proportion of us out there who was saying the Fed is crazy and inflation's going to get real crazy. And that's what yeah. we're seeing. You know, they, they let the cat out of the bag. And this is not just from 2020, it spans back 2008 quantitative easing started and before that. There was always the inflation goal of two percent. Yeah. Why do you need an inflation goal for? <laughs> when you, like if you if the money if there's no one controlling the money, then there's no inflation goal, right? Yeah. So, so it should just be left to the natural forces of money. But speaking of money, let's talk about PKT and some of these upcoming developments that you have because we could go on all day. People follow yeah. me know I can I can bash the government and Federal Reserve in my sleep it's <laughs> it's, it's one of the it's one of my favorite things to do but pkt showing a lot of promise we just had this nice nasty crash in the crypto market the whole time i kept pointing out to everybody look at PT, pkt and how it's not really being affected it's holding you know pretty strong and there's other projects like that and and that i think boils down to the community aspect you have a community and you have developers in PKT that have the maybe not the same perspectives, but kind of the same goal in mind of this complete decentralization of the internet. And that type of value is being added because of the community. Because without other people, it's just nothing, right? If nobody, <laughs> you can put out the right. best blockchain ever and nobody uses it, then who cares? <laughs> so, and we're seeing, we're seeing more and more growth i think in the pkt uh army as mm -hmm. you guys have started promoting more you know it's it's getting out there you're you're doing quite a bit of content yourself now which i'm surprised you have the time as busy as you are but pkt you've got a big development it's coming out if you want to release it drop it now to tell everybody a little announcement about it coming out here soon yeah absolutely so um there's the Anode VPN wallet slash VPN app. So I want to tell everybody how this is going to work. You're going to get, install the app on your Android or your iPhone, and then you're going to go nearby to somebody who has an internet using the, the, the packet device on the, with an internet connection, and they're going to have be sharing that internet. You're going to be able to get on the internet through that device using the app. And then in order to protect them from any liability and protect you from having any uh, privacy issues, you're going to be able to, you're, you're going to tunnel that connection through to your VPN. So you pick your VPN, pick, some, pick a VPN you trust, and then the packet network is going to get you on the internet and then get you to your VPN. And then you pay your VPN and the pay, VPN pays the person who's sharing the internet with packet. So it's very easy to set up and start sharing internet. You're not taking most of the legal liability because you don't have to worry about, you know, somebody's going to do something nefarious on your internet connection and then, oh no, what's going to happen? You know, right. it's not your IP address. It's going to a VPN. So this is a pre-release coming out on Sunday. So mark the date. It's going to be Sunday, June 26th. So that's three and days that away. Yep, we're going to be releasing the app. So the app is available. This is the Anode VPN wallet application.
at this point, it is good enough that you can use it for real money. All you got to do is write down your seed, use a decent password, and then you're going to be all right to use this for actual money. You know, you don't have to worry that uh, it's, it's going to it's going to lose your money because you've written down the seed. So it is a pre-release. It's not we're not uh, we're not 100 percent yet. There's a new user interface that's going to be coming in the next couple months. That's mm -hmm. something that's being worked on. But um, right now, this is what we've got in the pre-release. And this is something you can download off of GitHub and install the APK. And it will automatically update itself every time a new release comes out. So, um, oh, nice. So it's a it, one install and then you're one install and done with the APK, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. Nice. And so you've got, you've got the wallet and then you got the VPN, you got over here in the VPN and you, you can just, uh, open a list of VPNs and then you can just click on the VPN and it will get you connected. It'll jump on the, on the VPN. And, uh, then all of a sudden my phone thinks it's in Canada. So <laughs> That's what we're doing now. And uh, this is going to be nice because you're going to be able to hold the packet right on your phone or in the UI. And um, that that's the same basic code as uh, the Packet World Wallet. It's the same basic code as what's on the uh, Packet Pals Cube. It's it's the same uh, code, which is also going to be used for Lightning Network. The, it's uh, it's PLD. It's our it's our Lightning Network daemon. So um, we're on the we're now on the VPN. You can see the IP address is down there. Very um, nice. So World, real quick, um, with that connection, do you yeah. once you will download the Node VPN, you're saying that anywhere you go that you can find an internet connection or a Wi-Fi or anything, your phone will be able to connect to one of those connections. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just a regular VPN that you just be able to get on. Now the next phase is going to be the ability to jump on an internet sharing connection. And so you're just accessing a Wi-Fi. You don't got to enter a password or anything. The app just automatically jumps you in and uh, you're, that's tunneled straight to your VPN. So you don't need to worry about your privacy on that. I mean, your VPN, the idea is you don't need to worry about privacy, but um, you know, the way it works is that with CJDNS, is so that the other person doesn't need to worry about it either. And the CJDNS is a routing network, which means that because because it's routing from point to point to point, you can have, and this is what we're getting at, is you can have a device here that's sharing internet with your phone, and then that device is getting its internet from another device that's sharing internet with that one, and that one's getting internet from another device sharing mm -hmm. internet with that one, and that one is the one that actually has the, the connection. Uh, that's where we're building you know, mesh networking, that kind of stuff. So anyway, these are the things that are kind of in the pipe. And uh, yeah, I mean, development takes time, but oh, yeah. um, very, very happy that we now have. Uh, and I, I want to stress here that this is not just one of those apps that connects to a server and says, hey, how much money do I have? You know, a lot of that stuff, uh, MetaMask, um, even Electrum, you know, it's really just kind of connecting to a server, querying the server, hey, what do I have? This, this app, you know, I mean, you see up here in the top it says six peers, mm -hmm. you know, seven peers, whatever is, um, that's because this app is actually a, a connecting to the PKTD network. You know, it's got, it's connecting to seven nodes. And so that's how it operates. It's, it's a fully decentralized thing. So, I mean, ha being, being able to have something that's fully decentralized just right on your phone is already pretty significant, yeah. but it's been a long road to get to where we are. For and sure. the other thing about this is this software is the same software that is going to be empowering the lightning network. Once we start to really turn that on, you know, one of the things about this is that we just need more people to work on it, you know, <laughs> so we, we do one thing at a time, you know, we get a working app and then, you know, you get it so that you can uh, share the internet. And then we're going to be looking at uh, using the lightning network to make those transactions instant. You know, it, it's one thing at a time. That's all. So you are looking for developers at the moment, some some people to hire maybe or Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean the if if the, if there's somebody out there who uh is in a place where they're needing to get paid in national currency, you know, that's a person that uh they, they should write to jobs at packetpal.com because packetpal is a company in the packet ecosystem that is able to, you know, manage that kind of that kind of uh, relationship. But we also have, of course, the packet network steward, which the way that works, it takes 20% of all the, all the newly mined blocks and that, that goes to a multi-sig address. And that address 
it's managed by a group of volunteers, myself included. And what we do is we have a fully transparent system to allow people to propose projects to improve the packet ecosystem and ask for funding. And then we rank them and we, we, uh, we val value them based on their value to the community. We rank and we write notes. It's the same thing as a public tender, like um, in Europe, research projects in the US, usually done through Department of Defense. That's kind of how it works. Mm -hmm. People bid with their projects on, you know, who can do the best for the packet ecosystem. It's got to be open source. It's got to be equally beneficial to everybody in the ecosystem. No feathering your own bed with public money and no uh, extravagant fees. You can't ask for, uh, you know, a million dollars to, to do something because, you know, the, the network steward is being watched. It's all transparent. So the network mm -hmm. steward needs to make sure that there isn't anything that could be accused of being graphed. But as far as that, there is a lot of opportunity there for developers who want to pick up some packet or somebody that has a dev team and they want to pick up some packet, they can have their dev team do some open source work on, on this objective, this mission, and then they can pick up some packet doing it. Now, what's the main program language that they need to know? Uh, we got stuff in Go, we've got stuff in Rust, we've got stuff in okay. C. Um, I mean, it's really where you want to go. I mean, we got even, there's, you, you could make a project doing web dev if that's what you wanted to do. You don't want to do React JS, you know, make a project to make improvements to like the block explorer, you know, that those, these are things that you can do. There's, there's all different kinds of different levels, different stuff. It's just really, you got to be, you know, kind of open source. Uh, friendly, you got to be ready to, to jump into something like an open source developer. You got to be able to write down very specifically what you plan to do and um, right. how we validate what you know what you did. You know that you got to write your milestones because if we can't validate that you know this was done well, then we can't accept the project to begin with because you know you could deliver anything and say you delivered it. So <laughs> yeah. you got to write real good success criteria. And then, of course, you know, you want to you want to win a project, read all the old projects, read what other people did, read the comments that the mm -hmm. reviewers put on those projects. You know, all this stuff is open uh, is uh, fully transparent. So it's all available to be able to read it. So, uh, you know, anybody who wants to win our network sewer project can win one. You, you just got to get in there and read. Nice. And so anything can be built on PKT's blockchain, though, is what you're saying, pretty much any layer twos, all of that. Well, it's not an Ethereum based chain. It's it's a Bitcoin based chain. So, you know, there are certain limitations as far as like we don't have smart contracts and we don't want to. Um, mm -hmm. We want the smart contracts to exist outside of, of, of the, the main blockchain. They, they can exist over on the side. But as far as developing stuff that's part of the part of the roadmap or kind of like you want to evolve the roadmap a little, you think something's important, you want to you know propose that idea. Um, the build and open source software is pretty much always on the menu. You know, nice. uh, anything that's that's valuable to the community is is on the menu. You know, uh, we're not going to pay somebody to start a casino or to start <laughs> an exchange or any of these kind of things. All all very risky stuff. But you know, you want to develop some sort of software to to advance the roadmap down the road. You know, that that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. If you're a developer, you're looking for some work. PKT is hiring. Well, I should say P uh, Packet Pile is hiring. So we'll have all the right. links in the description for you uh, to be able to check out PKT, check out the PKT jobs, all of that. So no worries there. Just go down below. But I want to get back to you said something when you were talking about the Node VPN. You were saying this is a way to have real money. Can you elaborate yeah. on what you mean by that? Well, I mean, this is a way to have Packet on your phone mm -hmm. and you your phone is not contacting anybody's central server so if one of the there isn't any one node that could go down that then that phone would not function you know that because there are everything is redundant everything is the entire peer-to-peer -peer network it's just contacting the peers and asking hey can i can i have a block so you know that that the, the phone is in many ways self-sovereign here now the other thing is i mean packet is you, you real money is, is complicated definition but packet <laughs> is real in that 
uh, it doesn't have an issuer. It doesn't have uh, a pre-mine. It doesn't have uh, investors. As I say, precede investors or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's practically as real as Bitcoin in that, um, uh, the, in the way that it works. The key yeah, difference. A, proof of work Bitcoin. chain for those who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, a, it's the Bitcoin protocol. You know, it's, right. you can do proof of work, you can make it Ethereum, and that's the Ethereum protocol. But this is the Bitcoin protocol. And that's, that's also significant because it's just that much more stable and right. safe you know we we like our safety yeah. i when uh when we first started packet uh there was a lot of talk about you want to do an erc20 you want to do an ethereum chain or that and i said you know what i want all my bugs to exist in the networking code i don't yeah. want any bugs in the payment code i want the payment code to be perfect i want the payment code to be boring i want 10 year old payment code and i'll have the bugs over in the networking stuff which is where we're going to be pushing the boundaries I, you know we're not trying to be advanced with the financial side of things. We use old FinTech, you know, Bitcoin, it's 10 years old. Everybody understands it top to bottom. And then we're gonna get fancy with the networking where we're taking pieces of bandwidth and then able to, to buy and sell those the, the rights to those subdivisions of bandwidth and then knit those networks together. Right, and that's, that's why I like PKT and not Bitcoin is because you, and the whole team and community are pushing for a a coin like Bitcoin, but has more utility to it. Like Bitcoin, everybody says is a store of value right now. Basically, that's what it is, if you want to call it that. I disagree as a store of value, but we'll debate all that later, I'm sure. Uh, but PKT, on the other hand, has more than just the option to be a money or a currency. It's going to allow and disrupt a whole industry. Like Bitcoin did disrupt payment systems. The blockchain technology itself is going to disrupt every single sector. At this point, it's already happening. And the way this uh, Node VPN sounds, it sounds like it might be one of the safest wallets out there uh, on the market when it comes out. I mean, it's probably one of the most stable uh yeah, stable, in terms of word. yeah stable stability in terms of um i mean if you write your seed down you're 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 not going to you're going to be able to use it let's right, say right um you're, you're you know there was a time uh i think around the time that the uh the the, the russian russia invaded ukraine uh one of the um the main servers that supplies metamask you know, they just decided that they're going to block Russian IPs. And, you know, you're somebody and you, you have some Ethereum and like it's really important for you to be able to to manage your money. And you're just a regular person. And all of a sudden, because of some decision made by this one world leader and then these other people made this other decision and there's this this collision between that. Now you as an, a regular individual can't access your money. Right. So when the rubber hits the road, you know the difference between the the, the fancy coins and the really stable conservative coins. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, the Anna VPN would continue to work because there isn't that kind of central server that needs to supply the information to Anna VPN. Yeah, that's amazing. So the no VPN coming out Sunday, one of the newer developments in the PKT network. Caleb, where can they find you at? I know you're big in decentralization, so you are on the Fediverse. You are on Odyssey, which is not completely decentralized, but a alternate social media platform that is on blockchain instead of like YouTube, where it is owned by special people. <laughs> and uh, special people. <laughs> yeah, tell them where they can find you at. Uh, where else? You where you at? I know yeah. you're on Twitter and all that as well. Are you are you are you on Twitter? You're not on Twitter. I'm right? on Twitter. I don't talk very much. Okay. But you know, if you want to talk to me, if you want to hear my opinions on the, the world, then you want to go to Pacaterium.xyz. P k t e e r i u m. dot x y z. Register there. Follow me. That's a social media Fediverse. It's decentralized. So that server, Packeterium, is hosted in my living room. So 
if you're going to post something and it's going to upset somebody, well, it's going to be coming down to me whether it gets deleted or not. So that's where the censorship, uh, the, the, that's where the buck stops for censorship on that network. Now, uh, if you want to chat, if you want to talk, talk about Packet, if you want to get involved, if you want to join one of the teams, the groups that's doing different things in the project, that's where you might want to go on to pkt.chat and uh, sign up there. That, that's our kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit like Slack, but um, it's uh, also decentralized. And uh, well, it's not decentralized. It's just that I host it. So it's, uh, it's self-hosted in our community and you can jump in there. We have different groups doing different things. And you know you can meet people to get together and do whatever you're interested in doing or building a business or applying the network store project together with other people. So uh, I encourage you to jump on pkt.chat. You know, also have fun on the Fediverse, you know, Packeterium, DaxYZ, everything that gets that is said there is uh, is all falsehood and nothing is true. But <laughs> in, when everything is falsehood, that is where you can learn the truth. Very good point. And, and there you go, guys. Be sure if you want to get involved, go get involved. They have a Discord as well, which announcements from PKT's Discord does does run into the Framework Fortune Discord. So if you're already in Framework Fortune, just click on those announcements. You can get right over to the PKT Discord. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate you coming on, giving us an early look at the uh, Node VPN and talking a little bit of decentralization, something that we really need at the moment. Yeah, thanks for having me. And thanks for being interested in the vision, huh? Oh, People absolutely. I am fully on board uh, with PKT, and I'm going to try my best to push it out to everybody. I want decentralized internet. I've had internet problems with Spectrum. I will say their name, Spectrum. You're going down. PKT is coming <laughs> after you. Hashtag PKT Army. Appreciate everybody joining us as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.